Maxime's been beavering away on nice little features, quality of life enhancements, and all those kinds of good things that he's well known for on Advanced Thema. And before the final release comes out, there's a couple of things inside the current beta version I want to show you because I think these are really nice ways of improving your workflow. But there are lots more little things going on underneath the hood, as it were, little tweaks and enhancements. So let's check out the ones that I think are definitely worth noting right now. Now, before we go any further, this is a beta release. So if you want to test this out for yourself, you can get it from your account. But please don't use this on a live site because obviously there may still be bugs, quirks, and things that just cause issues. So with that warning in mind, let's jump into the settings of Advanced Thema and take a quick look at some of the things that I want to show you today. Now, most of them are available inside the Builder Tweaks section. So let's open that up. Hop into the top bar and take a look. Now, most things that are new will also be noted by this little new symbol. So you can, at a glance, see what's new since the last time you installed or updated. We've got the zoom out feature, which is something that I commented on when I saw this in the latest version of Gutenberg, when I was testing the beta version of that out. This is 6.7, I should say WordPress, not Gutenberg. And I just thought it was a nice way of being able to quickly zoom in and zoom out of your design to get a kind of bird's eye view. Thankfully, Maxims actually incorporated this into Advanced Thema. So let's enable this. We can set the percentage we want to work with. 40% is perfectly fine, and we'll click Save Settings. And now on the top bar, we can see we've got next to the percentage for scaling, and you do need to make sure that you have scaling enabled, otherwise this doesn't work. You've got the zoom out control, which you can use the keyboard shortcut or control command and N if you want to. I'm simply going to click on the little magnifying glass. And now you can see we've got a 40% view of exactly what we have inside our editor. We can also drag and drop any elements we want into our design. So let's come back to our plus. Let's grab a section, drag and drop that where we want it. And then you can see our section is added in. You can easily drag and reposition things inside the editor itself. So it's pretty nice to see how easy this is to work with. So I like the look of that. Let's delete this little section. And to go back out, you can simply hit the Zoom Out option. Now, obviously, all this is really doing is switching between a 40% view and a 100% view using the scaling option that's native inside Bricks. But the fact you can just simply click on it or use the keyboard shortcut to zoom in, zoom out, and still work, I think is pretty nifty. Next up, if you are used to working with lots of templates, it can be a little bit time consuming to dip in and out of the template section and all those kinds of things. So there's a nice new little feature. Again, keyboard shortcuts available for all these. If we come into the AT menu at the top, we've got quick remote templates. Let's select that. And you see a new pop out appears on the left hand side. We'll click in this example for the Bricks Maven account that I've got, but you can use your community templates or my templates, whatever you have set up. And now you can see in a nice organized window, still inside the editor, we've got all of our templates available. So maybe I want to drop in a contact section. I can choose that from my list and say, yep, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to grab this one, click and add it in. There we go. Our contact section is now added in. And again, we can still drag and move these around if we want to, to get exactly where we want. If we want to add more in, we can simply repeat the same procedure, jumping through the various different sections. If you've got multiple libraries inside you, which you can do with Bricks Builder now, you can simply hop into any of these, and you could if you wanted to mix and match. Not necessarily the nicest way of working, but you could do it if you needed to. So a pretty cool feature. This time, jumping into the Structure panel, there's a new feature called Focus Mode. And this allows you to, well, let me just demonstrate, it's easier. I'll enable that feature and save. Now then, let's say that I've got a very busy project going on, which you can see I've only got three sections. There's already an awful lot of options inside here. Now let's say I want to focus solely on this container inside the How It Works. If I hold the Shift key down and click it, it will now hide everything outside it and focus on that and everything that sits below it. So you can see inside the container, we've got our intro, list, and so on. If I wanted to just concentrate on the list, I can do the same thing again. I can shift click that, and we're just looking at that particular element. Let's say I want to look at a list item. Well, I could click on that, and now I've broken things down even smaller. Nothing has disappeared on our page. Everything is still there. And I can bring these back by simply clicking the X, where it tells me we've got focus mode activated. Click and bring it all back, and everything is back in my structure panel. So it allows you to, at a click, be able to simplify the structure panel when you have very complex layouts and you only want to focus on a very specific element or portion of your design. I think it's nifty. Would you have a use for it all the time? No, but a lot of what you can do with advanced theme is all about just making those little kind of boring repetitive operations or things that maybe you couldn't do before just a little bit easier. So it's one of those little things that I do appreciate this being added in.
Now staying inside the structure panel, let's scroll a little further down and we've got another new option called Lock Elements Order. Let's select that. So then you can say, do you want to lock status by default? You can say yes or no, it's up to you how you want to work. We'll leave it as it is, hit save settings. So now if we take a look at the structure panel, you see we've got a little padlock that's red that tells us the elements orders are locked. In other words, we can't move these around without unlocking them. So now if we try to drag any of these around, nothing will happen. If we expand one of these out and try to drag any elements around, nothing will happen. So we can't accidentally move things around, which I'm sure all of us have done in the past when we're working on a design, especially a complicated design, and you're working and your head's really stuck in it, and then you go back and take a look a couple of days later and wonder why you're heading, instead of being where it should be, is now at the top of the page, off to the left-hand side and looking kind of strange. Well, this just stops you having that problem when you're working. So we can select any of these elements and you see all our options are still available down the left hand side. We can still make changes. We just can't reorder them accidentally. If you want to change that, unlock them. And now we can easily reorder anything we want to. Then we can lock them back down. It's a nifty, again, nice little feature to have. If you have more complicated projects, this can be a lifesaver. It isn't something that is vital, but again, it's a nice little quality of life enhancements to the editor that just saves us a little bit of hassle further on down the line when we have those issues of moving things around accidentally. Now, there's one more feature that hasn't actually been implemented yet, but Maxime has already said that this is going to be in the next release. So hopefully when this beta becomes a final, we'll have this feature. Maybe in here now, but I can't find it. And all it means is where we've got these shortcuts down the right hand side next to our structure panel, which I use all of the time, they're not necessarily in the order that I would want to use them. So there's a new feature that will be coming out that'll have a little cog icon down the bottom where we've got this keyboard shut shortcut and you'll be able to reorder, enable, and disable any of those shortcuts from the right-hand side. That is, again, a nice, super useful little way of being able to stack the things you use the most common at the top and maybe the ones that you don't use as often a little bit further down the list. Maybe even customize them on a project-by-project -project basis. But those are the kind of little features that I wanted to demonstrate in the beta release of Advanced Thema. If you want to see more about working with Advanced Thema, you can check out my videos here. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. And if you'd like me to go through and update my beginner's guide to getting set up and running using Advanced Thema, let me have a comment in the comment section. And if enough people are interested, I'll update that with a lot of the new features that have been added into Advanced Thema. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.